Progressive presents an interview with your upstairs neighbor. My name's Barry. I live right above you. I don't host parties. I host after parties. They're like parties, only louder and nobody goes home. You can see right here I ripped out all the carpeting because it was holding me back with my pogo stick. Man's got a pogo. Oh, I'm a prankster. I'll grease up a soda can and then when somebody grabs it, boom! <laughs> Progressive can't save you from your upstairs neighbor, but we can save you money when you bundle renters and auto insurance with us. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. If you are watching this live on Facebook, it is 10 a.m. in the East. Of course, it is 7 a.m. out there in Las Vegas and in beautiful Costa Rica, home of Sportsbook Review. It is 9 a.m. Welcome to the world-famous tailgate party, where we are going to preview both of today's NFL games and a bonus preview of the college football national championship game. Number knows that the secret to surviving I don't want to take advice from fools You always won every time you play the best Multitasking, you know. See, when you do these Facebook lives, I get to um, do all the uh, production and you know put the graphics. Let's put all those neat graphics up there. Sportsbook review and Joe Duffy's picks at offshoreinsiders.com. And thank you to those of you who have already um, checked in. Horace, uh, Justin, and Chris. Good morning, Guillermo. The money. All right. Yes, we definitely will. One of my uh, best friends in college, whose name was uh, Guillermo from uh, Peru. We are going to preview, as I said, and, you know, I notice, uh, you know, please make sure that you do like us, and I'm going to try to do that right now. I was just checking the Sportsbook Reviews page. That's not, you know, that's not playing fair. you got the, one of the most beautiful women in the world, Natalie. She's doing a uh, commercial telling you to subscribe. And then right below me, you got me. So you got, you know, one of the most beautiful women in the world, one of the ugliest guys in the world. That's not playing fair. I can, I can look bad enough on my own, but still, hopefully I'll make up for uh, that with some great information. Been doing this for... 30 years, 30 years, uh, literally. All right, let's take a look at the Bills and the Jaguars. The Jaguars laying 8.5 with a total of 39.5. And, and uh, you know, hopefully as I was playing with my computer, well, I didn't really, yeah, as you see, I used that in, in, intro, which got in the uh, way. But, yeah, you can check it out at uh, Sportsbook Review, SBRodds.com, the latest odds. Make sure you never get screwed by a line move. And I don't even send my personal customers to a offshore sports book unless it gets an A or an A plus rating from sports book review. All the sports books that I recommend are definitely um, touted by sportsbookreview.com and also the best place to go for the latest line shopping. And remember, uh, I love the scores and progress stuff as well for college basketball. But the Bills and the Jaguars, when you have a team in the playoffs, despite being outscored by at least 35 points for the season, Bills are a rare case here. You know, I say time and time again, the most overrated statistic when it comes to handicapping against the spread is straight-up record. Well, the Bills, in rare case, where they've been outscored by, I think it's like 50 points this year, yet they're still in the playoffs. When a team's been outscored by at least 35 points in the postseason, it's actually going over. Of course, I was looking for an ATS to see if there was any ATS advantage. As it turns out, there is a big over advantage. Now, you could definitely make a strong argument it's an anomaly because it's a small sample size, but it's going over 8 and 1, including 8 straight. Now, the bad team, in the case of, of uh, this case in the Bills, the bad team's actually 5 and 4 straight up and against the spread. So that would favor Buffalo. But these games have had a total of 54.2 points per game. Now, is it an anomaly or does it say that, you know, in a team that's been outscored uh, during the regular season by a large margin. They're going to tend to not be conservative. They're definitely not going to be conservative in the postseason, which you can certainly understand that logic. As I said on my site, offshoreinsiders.com, where I give the uh, picks, of course, that's where I give my opinion on my videos through Sportsbook Review, and even I, I do on my own channel. I like to take more of the I report, you decide approach. So I do want to point that out, how when you do have... Uh, yes, uh, Ryan figured out anyone would. How much would you uh, feed three times? Ah, no, no, no. Okay. Yes, Ryan, we have looked that up. And in fact, I think I have that exact statistic with the uh, Panthers and the uh, the Saints. We'll, we'll get, well, now, Ryan is um, asking about, you know, the old cliche, 
It's really tough to beat a team three times in a season. Now, I, I have looked it up, and uh, there is no real advantage either way. In fact, there's a slight advantage straight up. The team that wins the first two matches in the uh, rematch in the postseason, they do have a slight advantage, nothing from a handicapping standpoint. But one of the things that I like to do is kind of shoot down some myths. And every now and then, there are stuff that aren't angles, so to speak. In fact, we're going to have one on this game. I'm going to discuss that. Yeah, there is no big advantage and a slight edge towards a team that actually has won. A slight edge straight up, but usually the team that's won both um, regular season meetings is going to be the favorite. Uh, yeah, there is no big advantage, and certainly, certainly betting on the team that has lost both of the regular season matchups is not a good idea. We even looked that up in college football. Remember the SEC championship game was a rematch, and the team that wins a regular season matchup, and they meet in either the, the conference championship rematch or in the bowls, slight advantage towards a team that actually won. Now, of course, that was not the case in the SEC championship game, but yeah, that is a big, big bull crap. Bull, oh, that's right, we're not on uh, TV, so we're not controlled by the FCC. That is a bullshit um, statement when people say, and you'll probably hear it today, the announcers will say it on the pregame show, maybe during the it's really tough to beat a team three times in the same season. No, not if you've already beaten them twice. So, you know, a- excellent question, uh, Ryan. We have looked that up, and uh, includes, as I said, revenge in college football, which happened, which is happening a little bit more and more often. Totally uh, false. If anything, that would be a slight lean towards the team that wins uh, both of the games. They usually win straight up. Not so much against the spread, because obviously that team's going to be a, a big favor. But also, yeah, another one that I, 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 I want to, um, another myth I want to shoot down here about these correlated parlays. I hear it all the time. I've been hearing it for years. We even broke it down. I think I have a video on my own uh, YouTube page, and I know I've written an article even before YouTube, and you know, maybe I'll, I can update it with updated statistics. I hear all the time when you have a line like this where you have a high line but a low total, and then people say, well, you know, if you like the over, then you got to like the Jaguars. If you like the uh, Bills, you know, then you got to like the under, things like that. No, I've broken it down when we have a high total and a, um, you know, when you have a high point spread and a low total, there's four you know, possible outcomes excluding pushes, and the two most likely outcomes based on that statement I made are actually the ones that come up least frequently, least frequently. So, yes, the the Jaguars and the over and the Bills and the under, they're the two least likely scenarios statistically based on, quote-unquote, if you like the uh, big underdog, then you got to like the under. If you like the big favorite, then you got to like the over. That is also... Bullshit. So thank you for the question, uh, Ryan. And another, so yeah, there's there's a couple myths that apply today. Now, it's not necessarily completely in the reverse, per se. It's not like it's in the reverse. But again, stopping people from buying into, uh, you know, these, these bullcrap handicapping arguments, that's, you know, part of the key to winning handicapping as well, not believing in urban legends. Another one that I talk about quite often uh, does not apply today, I, I don't believe, but did apply yesterday. And we, by the way, we swept the board yesterday in the NFL. We had both underdogs, including the Falcons. However, however, we did uh, tell you that where people overanalyze splits, um, that's another big mistake that people make when they look at the home road dichotomy. That has proven to be a, a myth as well. It's only the fifth time in history that the team's respective margins have a season-to-date difference of at least 205 points they're meeting in a playoff game. Now, the superior team is 3-1 and one straight up, but 2-2 two and two against the spread. So, again, we're talking about uh, points per game margin. The Jaguars' net margin is more than 205. The history says in very limited samples, you can understand why that's a very limited sample, we're likely to win straight up. Obviously, not going that far out on the limb, I guess, but only 2-2. Two and two against the uh, spread. So, you know, admittedly, maybe my bias said that, yeah, the Bills, if they're not as good as their record, they might be a team to go against. When I looked it up in the computer, basically it said it was indecisive. There is no edge either way when you're comparing the points per game margin relative to the uh, one-loss record where the the Bills are not as good as their record based on the uh, points. Well, either it doesn't matter whether it's points per game 
for cumulative for the year. Same idea. So there's no advantage either way there. Uh, playoff favorites of at least four points on a two-game losing streak are actually 8-0 and oh against the spread by a 31.8 to 14.4 margin. So a lot of people like to bet against big favorites that go into the postseason slumping, or a lot of people like to bet against teams that go into the postseason slumping. Another myth here. In fact, the opposite is true, but again, limited sample size. Now, at the risk of stating the obvious, of course, the big handicapping uh, question is Blake Bortles. Which Blake Bortles is going to show up? The Blake Bortles of previous years or the Blake Bortles, who's been very solid this year, kind of like Marcus uh, Mariota. Of course, Mariota hasn't been around quite as long. And uh, there's really similar type of quarterbacks. Bortles, like Mariota, can beat you with his legs. And I think that is extremely important, more important in the playoffs. Why? Because guys are going to let it all out. Where, you know, during the regular season, uh, a guy like a Mariota or Bortles might be less likely to use those legs in a, in a weapon. As a weapon in the playoffs, they definitely will. So keep that in mind. You know, of course, uh, you know, we're keeping an eye on LaShawn McCoy. Uh, will he be a scratch? He does have an ankle injury. Looks like he will probably uh, play 1,138 yards, rushing 59 receptions. guess it's probably a good thing they are playing in that warm weather of Jacksonville, where if they were playing hypothetically in Buffalo, uh, you know, that uh, ankle could certainly tighten up. But that's something that obviously every gambler is going to keep an eye on just to make sure that uh, LaShawn McCoy is playing. Jag- now, again... I've said, and, you know, I look at um, a fellow, Alan Boston, who's a college basketball guru, cynical guy, and I agree with him, and it applies to all sports, where he says he doesn't overanalyze matchups. To me, a good team's always going to match up well against a bad team, and you don't want coaches to get too predictable. But again, for those of you who believe in matchups, you would say that the Jaguars' running game matches up pretty well against Buffalo. The Jaguars get 141 rushing yards per game. The team's normally allowing just 111, while the Bills allow 125 yards rushing. The team's normally getting 107. So Jacksonville, good running game. Buffalo, not so good against the run. Will the Jags just decide to uh, pound the ball? Almost dead even from a public betting standpoint. As we, as I said, I use several different sources. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting ready to choke. I think I, you know, those of you watching me every week, as I said, I usually get my Allergies right around Thanksgiving. They were delayed a little bit uh, this year. Still coughing a little bit, but I think I'm at the tail end, hopefully, of my yearly allergy uh, getting slammed. Almost dead even in public betting, but as I said, I've got several different sources I use offshore. Vegas and, you know, all, all these years in the business, I do know some of the outlaw bo- bookies. Almost dead even, um, in fact, split among our sources. A couple of our sources say slight lean towards the Bills. A couple of our sources say slight lean towards the Jaguars. So, Almost dead even. Now, my free pick's going to be in this game because of that stat I gave you earlier. Can't ignore it. Again, limited sample size, so it's not a premium play, but all those, I mean, it's going well over the total, well over the total. Um, when you do have a, a team like Buffalo that maybe their points per, that their, uh, their margin, their points per game at margin or point cumulative margin for the season, either way, when that, that implies they don't belong in the playoffs, those teams tend to go way over the total. So the free pick, is Buffalo to go over the 39 and a half. Now, as far as um, analyzing, and by the way, thanks for all those who uh, gave us likes. That will help us. As far as exposure, feel free to, uh, you know, comment or questions like Ryan's already asked. Um, but, yeah, feel free to uh, do that. And even if you're watching on demand, I do send this to a, a couple other platforms, such as YouTube. Even if you're watching it there, please definitely leave your comments. Now, when, when handicapping, um, you know, contrarian information, a lot of people like to look at public betting tendencies. No secret here. I've said it many times. The public loves to bet favorites, of course. But the exception in every single sport, when the playoffs come around, especially the deeper you go into the playoffs, all of a sudden they like to bet dogs. The truth is the public likes to bet on quality teams. They don't like to bet on horrible teams. And you don't have any horrible teams in the postseason. No chance to bet uh, for or against Cleveland this week. So I definitely use um, contrarian information, sharp versus square. I've really tightened up my criterion for that, but it's weighted differently in the postseason, knowing public tendencies. It almost, almost, you could go almost blindly by mere percentages because in the postseason, all of a sudden, the public actually does like to bet underdogs. So it's not really that much of an aberration when the public uh, likes underdogs in the postseason, and that is true in every single sport. Panthers and the Saints, we did talk about uh, earlier. 
As far as, uh, you know, the, the old cliche, it's really tough to beat uh, teams three times in a year. If you're joining us live in progress, make sure you uh, watch the On Demand. It's, you know, it doesn't disappear. It's still in the Sportsbook Review Facebook page, so you can watch it from the beginning. The Panthers and the uh, Saints, Saints six and a half and a total of 48. Uh, the Panthers are nine and six against the spread, though, on an 0 and 2 run. Now, the Saints get 0.5 more yards per rush, 0.9 more yards per pass, and 0.8 more yards uh, per play than their opponents normally allow. Yeah, the Saints did sweep the season series. And, in fact, here's one more specific to uh, Ryan, I believe, was the uh, the guy. Yes, Ryan was a gentleman who asked. Uh, favorites of four and a half or greater in the playoffs who swept their opponent during the regular season only one and three against the spread. So, again, not statistically significant. I have never, will never, ever, 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 ever. Um, I, I never do um, bet, bet something on one and three, you know, three and one statistics. But we like to test theories, and I know that's on a lot of people's minds. So big favorites that did um, sweep the season series, only one and three against the spread. Yeah, as far as uh, Chris, I, I agree it's not a premium play. He's asking, how do I feel the Bills uh, will go over the total with, oh, the, te- the, te- the team uh, over the total. Yeah, the again, when I, the statistic that I gave, I always try to explain it. And then there are other times if something is statistically overwhelming, uh, you know, my attitude is don't outsmart yourself. But again, limited because of this. But I do think that the, the explanation that makes the most sense is a team like Buffalo would be more aggressive in the postseason. And I've said it a million times, handicapping sides and totals is much more, I'm sorry, handicapping totals in basketball and football is much more about pace than it is offensive or defensive competence. Look, I agree. When you, you look at the Bills, you're going to say, well, you know, how the heck are they going to score? They're playing against Saxonville. But it's a low total. And I do believe that statistic I gave you earlier, where the games tend to go way over the total, when a, a team, their points per game um, would imply, or their margin would imply that they don't belong in the playoffs, they tend to get more aggressive. So, yes, I do think that the, uh, the Bills will probably be aggressive today, and the team total would be a uh, good play. Yeah, Leo uh, says that he loves the Saints, you know, and, you know, you, you, you could uh, certainly be right there. I do have my premium picks at offshoreinsiders.com. The public, as a general rule of thumb, does like to favor, favor, but as I said, not so much in the playoffs. I don't know if I would uh, love anybody in these circumstances. It's a heck of a matchup. You know, remember, I always say Cam Newton has been the ultimate box of chocolates. Um, and in fact, he had one very good game this year against the Saints and one bad game. Um, you know, when you have a, a guy who's so erratic like Cam Newton, who looks like the MVP of two years ago in certain games, and then in other games, he's looked very mediocre, even terrible. As a general rule of thumb, when you're getting big points, and big points would be any home underdog or um, a road underdog, at least, you know, well, certainly more than three, or three and a half or more. So that can be a decent percentage play. Uh, playoff teams off the double-digit loss are 8 19 and one against the spread. That would say to favor, uh, that to fade the uh, Panthers. As you remember, they were playing in that big game last week where they could have gotten a bye against the Falcons. I can't, you know, I can't even remember all the playoff ramifications of last week. It was slightly more important for the Falcons, obviously. Panthers lost and they're still here, but, but they lost a, you know, a game that was important and teams that all are off of double digit losses in the final week of the regular season do not do well in their first playoff game. Yet again, almost dead even, public consensus, and split among our sources. Well, I did. King Al, say, you know, King Al Panthers, I'm leading. Um, Thornton Quick, Parlay, Moneyline, and the Over Saints Moneyline, the Over. Well, one of the things, Thornton, thank you um, for joining us. I, think, I don't know if you've um, checked in with us yet this year. Thank you for that. I don't like Parlay. I do not bet Parlays. The only time I recommend Parlays is, and he did mention the money line actually, so... Uh, you know, I don't do that many money lines in the NFL, especially with favorites. The only time I do recommend parlays is in baseball when you've got two favorites. Uh, occasionally I'll combine them as parlays to, to make, you know, the hitting the parlay at where you actually get paid as if it's an underdog. I'm not a big parlay guy. Always, always tell my clients at offshoreinsiders.com that each one of them individually. Now, of course, in your case, yeah, that's where you can make uh, a big favorite on the money line, a little bit more valuable. Um, 
you know, when people see the Saints, they're going to automatically think over, and that's much like the Falcons yesterday. Is the Saints improvement, is it for real? And the Falcons yesterday certainly said it, it, it is. Be a little bit careful of that because, you know, the Saints' defense drastically improved from last year. But as far as the over, again, Cam Newton, there hasn't been a rhyme or reason. It's not like uh, Newton has played his best against the, the worst teams and it's worse against the be- best teams. So, you know, the, the Saints' defense, the, this, this total seems to reflect the reputation of the Saints, not the reality of this year. But... You know, a lot of people do think that the playoffs are the great equalizer. And again, Cam Newton, yeah, he could have a quarterback rating of 70. He could have one of 110. Of course, you could say that about any quarterback. But Net Newton would top the list this year of guys who have been a pure um, Jekyll and Hyde. And uh, so what are the picks for today? Well, Casey, make sure you do. Uh, well, okay. Well, we'll tell you, we did give the free pick of a Buffalo over. Is a free pick. I do have some NFL sides as well as college basketball at offshoreinsiders.com. And as promised, and again, you missed any part of this, go back, watch it from the beginning. It's available on demand. As I do see, I'm getting you know more and more viewers in the middle of the broadcast. That's, I guess that's the way it's always going to happen with a live broadcast, whether it's on uh, YouTube. Make sure you do, you know, make sure you subscribe to Sportsbook Reviews, whether it's a Facebook page. And as I said, uh, look at the top, it's pinned at the top of the Sportsbook Review Facebook page. Lovely Natalie, much better looking than me. Not saying much, and she's much better looking than a lot of people. She she does. I didn't have time to actually watch the commercial, but I think she was saying subscribe. You know, some days it's very very tight. But uh, she uh, says, you know, make sure you subscribe to all of Sportsbook Reviews. They got, got some great personalities. You guys know I have enormous respect for uh, Donnie Wrightside and Big Man on Campus. And what I like about them is, you know, I like to take a look at it more from an analytical point of view, and those guys do what I like to refer to as the organic handicapping. I mean, these guys know the personnel inside and out. Of course, the veteran Peter Loshak, I've had the pleasure of doing a bunch of stuff with him. He does great shows, great interviewer, and, you know, all the uh, Sportsbook Reviews personality. So at the top of the Sportsbook Review Facebook page, make sure you click on that uh, subscribe link. So then I would take a look at the uh, National Championship game, Alabama and Georgia. And, of course, you know, make sure you do shop around. Alabama's been bouncing back and forth at times. I think they've been as high as six, even six and a half, and as low as four, pretty low total. Um, of course, at the risk of stating the obvious, this game is being played in the state of Georgia, not necessarily as big of a, what I like to call, neutral field advantage, as some people may say. Um, and, uh, yeah, bu- and uh, yeah, Casey's asking, Buffalo points over or the game. No, my official pick, somebody had asked, and maybe that was you, Casey. I'm going back. Thanks for a bunch of questions today. Yeah, that was, uh, I was specifically responding to uh, Chris Pinneger, who was asking about the Buffalo team total over. Now, my official pick is the game, the, the game over the total, 39 and a half, and we'll see if that total drops. So, yes, I appreciate that question, so uh, thank you for making sure I, I clarify that. Now, my official pick is for the game to go over the total, but I was responding to a uh, specific question. And, uh, yeah, Leo says he likes Bama over the uh, 44. Uh, Alabama is only traveling 187 miles. Georgia is traveling 60 miles. Uh, you know, of course, that's right down the road from me. Uh, Georgia, you know, remember the quote-unquote home team in Atlanta is actually Georgia Tech. So Georgia is, you know, traveling a little bit less. Uh, and look, I would expect it would be a slightly partisan crowd to Georgia, but these Alabama fans are fanatical. I would say at the most at the most, if I had to set an over-under for, you know, the partisanship, I would say maybe 60-40 Georgia-Alabama crowd split. But don't expect this to be a, a a home field. I think this is pretty close to a true neutral field game. Now, Alabama 6-7 and seven against the spread. Georgia is 10-4 and four against the spread. You know, I, I've discussed it. I don't consider um, neutral games to be road games for both teams. But, again, taking that I report, you decide approach. And especially if you do consider this more of a road game for Alabama, keep keep it or you know well. Al- Georgia is seven and one on the road, but again, some people consider this more of a home game for Georgia. And I don't consider neutral games to be road games, but again, kind of taking the I report, you decide approach on the uh, tailgate party because I, I know a lot of you like to make your your own picks. And as much as I'd like to believe that every single one of you were my uh, clients, if every single one of you were my clients, including on the rebroadcast, yeah, I'd be a 
a one percenter. I know a lot of you like to uh, handicap the games yourself, and that's what we're here for at uh, Sportsbook Review. So I like to give out the information that I may or may not weigh as heavily as you do. Um, Georgia, 2.3 net yards per play advantage. That is, their net yards per play on uh, offense. I'm sorry, their yards per play on offense minus the yards per play they give up on defense. Alabama, slightly better. They have a 2.8 margin. Georgia, 2.3. Now, something to consider, as you know, the Dogs were off a double overtime game while Alabama won in a uh, relative breeze last week. Of course, uh, the Dogs had to come from behind. We all... It would be high scoring, even if, you know, it could, could have been high scoring and still went under the total, but goes way over the total. No question, uh, Georgia off of a much more uh, mentally and physically draining game. Now, you could argue, look, Clemson's a very physical team. That is true. But, uh, of course, with the, the big comeback by Georgia, mentally and, and physically exhausting, uh, you know, the, the way the last games turned out, probably a slight advantage for Alabama. But, again, these teams play on a week-to-week basis. And remember... They're coming off. Of course, entering the Final Four, they had that long break. So I don't know if I would over overweigh the fact that Georgia had a tougher game last week, but, uh, you know, it's certainly something to consider. Now, again, uh, all the experts I trust, as I said, you know, Donnie uh, right side of Big Man on, on campus or the guys uh, on SBR who I, who I really respect as far as, um, you know, the uh, a- analyzing the, the personnel, but a lot of opinions I trust, look, they... And everybody agrees. Alabama, because of injuries, this is not a classic Alabama defense. They're still arguably the best defense in the country, but this is not as good of a defense that they've had in previous years, especially the pass rush. And, you know, with the freshman Jake Fromm, who's been as cool as uh, the breeze of a peppermint patty this year, uh, you know, will Alabama be able to get that classic pass rush on the freshman Jake Fromm and make him finally, finally panic? It's not as good of a classic pass rush. Um, I wish I could, you know, I've I've been asked a couple times. I don't know. No one's actually asked me um, yet. And uh, Casey Pollock says, can't see Georgia running on Bama as he did on Oklahoma. Well, that, I'm going to agree with you there, Casey. They're not going to have as much success. Georgia's won two points. And and they've got it. They're deeper than um, just Chubb and Michelle. That uh, freshman kid is Phenomenal as well. Georgia's got a deep running game. Yeah, it's, you know, you're not going out big on a limb there, Georgia. They're not going to have as much success. No one has enormous success running the ball against Alabama, but they have a hell of a running game. A hell of a running game. And this is a a classic matchup and a classic smash mouth. Georgia's running game is deep, deep, deep. And that's really been, you know, um, the, the biggest difference. Um, going back to the Mark Rick there, Mark Rick recruited some pretty good running backs too, but they all got hurt or suspended. So, uh, you know, Kirby Smart, you know, he's had some luck, and he and he's done a great job recruiting depth, much like his uh, boss, Nick Saban. But Georgia's got a hell of a running game, and they don't, look, they don't need to have as much success as they did against Oklahoma because they're not playing as an explosive an offense, so they don't need to be as successful on offense as they were against Oklahoma. But Oklahoma, but Alabama's got a pretty darn good offense themselves. Now, been well-publicized. Um, Nick Saban is 11-0 straight up against his former assistants by a 427 to 111 margin. I don't, you know, the software, I can't really program that into uh, software to see how he's done ATS, but keep in mind this is as good of a team as he's he's faced. George is for real. So, you know, how much do you, you read into that, especially since a couple of his uh, assistants have been so so? Yeah, we know with, uh, you know, Michigan State, he did blow out in a big game. Um, well, it, it's important, it's important, but don't become too obsessed with that. And the public is betting Alabama, not really a, a shock there. And, uh, you know, by about a 6-4 to four margin, it's across the board, as far as my sources say, you know, Vegas, Offshore, and Outlaw. They are betting Alabama, but not by a large margin. But I get back I get back to what I said earlier in this broadcast. The one and only time that the public does like to bet underdogs is the postseason, and you can't go deeper into the postseason than this. So, you know, you're talking about a Georgia team that actually uh, has more wins than Alabama. And, uh, you know, so there you go. Thank you, uh, everybody, for joining me. We'll talk to you next week. Remember, offshoreinsiders.com is where I got for my premium picks. I don't think I missed any comments. Thank you for the uh, comments and uh, and uh, whatnot. Make sure you do join me at offshoreinsiders.com. 
Uh, you know, Georgia can't let, yeah, I mean, you know, Leo, I, that's one of those things I, it's kind of funny. I like to talk about, Leo says, um, Georgia can't let Alabama get points on the board early in the game and it's all over. Oh, okay. All over us. I mean, all over 44. Yeah. I would say if you're rooting for the over, um, you could probably make an argument that you want to root for Alabama points early because, you know, Georgia still has a solid passing game, but look, you just want early points, period, and and teams are going to tend to uh, open it up. So uh, yeah, I, I thought we I thought what you were initially saying is if you know the, the old cliche, people overanalyze games, and I like on the pregame shows when they analyze a, a a big game. What they love to say is, you know, it's important who scores first. I think whoever scores first is going to set the the, the tone of the game, and that might be a little bit more true in a game that's expected to be low scoring. Um, but no, really, if honestly, if you like to bet live lines, I think this game um, is going to be nip and tuck all the way. Anything, you know, if, if whoever scores first touchdown, if the team gets a seven-point lead, I would take a serious look at betting the other team on the live line. I do think this game uh, is going to be quite quite interesting. Of course, the big games aren't, aren't always. The, act, uh, the semifinal games finally were both, you know, pretty competitive. The, the Clemson-Alabama game, I don't think, you know, was a, a total blowout. So it was nice to see some competitive games. And how about that UCF uh, win against Auburn? It's been a great year. Again, I, I understand people don't get my pitch. You're probably wondering if that 205 and 130, 204 and 135 record is legit. It is. And it's been a great postseason. 2-0 in the NFL playoffs. Great bowl season. I've um, got the wise guy side and major side for today. Join me at offshoreinsiders.com. And, yeah, make sure you join me at Sportsbook Review and subscribe to the top of this page to the uh, lovely Natalie. She tells you how to subscribe to the great multimedia at uh, sportsbookreview.com, and we will talk to you next week. The new year comes with new ways for pros to save at Lowe's. Like when you're ready to tackle your taxes, we'll help you save up to $100 off federal tax preparation when you file through TurboTax. All you have to do is sign up to become a Lowe's Pro Loyalty member by January 25th, and the savings is yours. This exclusive offer is for new Lowe's Pro Loyalty members only, so sign up at lowesforpros.com slash proloyalty. Lowe's, the new home for pros. Discount valid on select TurboTax services through October 15th. More terms apply. U.S. only.